Well, now you know, and uh, we have started the recording, and you're the host today, Jeff. Yippee! <laughs> did that, did that, it, that didn't quite sound like authentic or, or even enthusiastic or, or even like sincere, did it? <laughs> no, it sounded, it sounded sincerely like you just don't care. <laughs> Which it must I, be the rain, the rain, the rain, the rain, the rain, the rain. That's all I'm going to say. Last time I'm going to say it. Okay, moving on. Yes. Mr. Mr. Abel, how are you doing down there today? Um, so, so word on the street says um, we might be hitting triple digits down there today. Uh, yeah, in a few days. Uh, forecast, uh, I think three days from now, 95, 96, and then the day after, 100. A hunch. Yeah, so it's, it's happening. I, I think we're done with the 70s. I think yeah. it's straight into the 80s now for the rest of uh, until December. Got it. So got it. No, it's good. All it's right. all good. All right. Well, um, so subject matter today. Are you ready? Yeah. Do you want to tell the folks how they can get in the free coaching call with us? Well, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> there we go again with the. Uh, well, all right. Whatever. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Uh, so uh, no, I mean, yeah. if, you know, if you want to get better, fine. But if if you don't, that's cool. Too. Yeah, if you do, give us a call. If yeah. not, uh, yeah. you're on your own. No, yeah, that's right. Um, don't mean that. Actually, give us a call and um, <laughs> at, a at call. where goldballhunting.com. Yes. Check in with us. Um, a free 10 minute coaching call. There you go. And uh, bring that one item that is just the stick in your spokes right now. You just can't quite figure out. It's stuck in your craw, and you can't figure it out. So uh, you know, give us a call, and we'll get on the call with you. Give us and, a call. Uh, give us a call <laughs> <laughs> anytime. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm, I'm just, gonna actually tell the folks how to do this, right? Okay, because I'm just I'm just I'm just rogue today. <laughs> you're just totally. What do they say? Uh, rogue. I'm off the grid. You're off the grid. Yeah, I've gone AWOL. Yeah. Uh, look, so yeah, the free ten minute coaching call with maybe it's just better. Or, nah, you, if you want to get them with me and Jeff, that's fine. Three of us private. GoBallHunting.com, you'll be presented with a form. You put in your first name, your email address, you click the button, and you get That's access. How you do it. <laughs> they don't call us. Uh, and then you get, you get uh, access to our online calendar scheduler where you get to pick your own time and date that works best for you. This is not Jeff's deal. This is, this is your deal, and, and Jeff will be at the mercy of whatever date and time you call. That's right. So, all right. I'll now, be there. Go ahead, Mr. Host. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so on my on my way to HQ today, um, you know, I was kind of I was kind of jogging from the house to HQ, and um, I, I have a we, we have a large uh, Alsatian, uh, um, which is the, uh, the French version of the German Shepherd, large 110 pounder. He's a big boy. And he was kind of he kind of maneuvers. He's big, so it's not like he he doesn't cut like a like a cat. He's not that kind of maneuverability, but he moves pretty well. But once he gets in a direction, you definitely got to slide out to the side, or you're going down, right? So, mm. so what does that all mean? I had to kind of like do a little little check, you know, split check to get out of the way. <laughs> this is how you're teeing it, it up. Okay, go ahead. That's right. And so and so I thought, you know. Gosh, you know the split check can be used. Not it's not just it's not just for tennis. It, it's so universal. But in tennis, I think we can get trapped into uh, when, where, why. Um, I think there's some I think there's some mm -hmm. standard um, kind of etched in stone ideas. But and, and I think that that rigid concept can also end up being a hindrance. It can actually do us more damage than good. So so I'm going to tee it up for you here. The split step. The split check, the check stop, whatever, however you like to call it. Brenny Abel, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> that was exhausting. You know, I was just, I'm thinking I <laughs> might need to do a timeout here just to kind of regroup, maybe an injury timeout. What do I get? 10 minutes? Can I get the guy, the <laughs> yes, trainer to come right. over? That's right. Start resuscitating me. Um, yeah. yeah, the split step is a, is a, a heavily used phrase that the most common question I get about the split step, and I'll, I'll bet you do too, Jeff, is, well, when do I split step? And to me, that is uh, putting the cart in front of the horse 
I think that's how that thing goes. Um, yeah. Because it's really, you have to figure out, what, what's the purpose of the split step? What's the function of it? Forget how to do it. Forget when to do it. What is the purpose of it? And to me, I think there's two different purposes. There's one for singles and there's one for doubles. And right. if you think about the purpose of the split step in singles, it's, it's you, you come into this neutral position. They call it an athletic position. But where you're, you're, you're now, it's kind of like, it's kind of like you're a linebacker in football, right. and right. the runner, the halfback, has just broken through your lineman, fellas. Way to go! Now I've got to deal with this guy. <laughs> Thanks. And and you don't know, and this runner's coming right at you, and you don't know if he's going right or if he's if he's going to your right or if he's going to your left. So you come into this position so that you can react to the direction that the runner's going to go. Well, it's the same thing with tennis, right? You come into this thing, into this position, call it whatever you want, so you can react to the direction of the ball. In singles, right. the odds are that you're going to have to move to your right or to your left to react to go towards and, and, and retrieve the shot or move over the shot that your opponent's just hit. Right. In doubles, because you have a narrow space and you know, you've only got half the court to cover, the chances when you move in, when you go into your split step, is to get out of the way of the ball. The chances right. go way up now that because it's a it's a more narrow space you're covering, the ball is right. going to be coming at you. So, first of all, the purpose of split step and singles is to be able to move to the right or to the left. Doubles, totally different movement, is to get out of the way of the path of the ball. Right. And and all of this is the purpose is in, is is to help you get aligned spatially to the path of that incoming ball, whether you move right. to the right, move to the left, or whether you have to get out of the way of the path of the incoming ball. So, so first of all, to me, that's the purpose of it. That's the reason we do it. The next question is, well, when do you do it? Well, when every, do you do it? Yeah, I mean, everyone says, <laughs> well, you do it just a nanosecond before the guy makes contact with the ball. And, and, and to me, it's, it's like, first of all, you have to determine, well, how far away literally is the ball from where you are in the court? So right. if, I'm, if I'm playing an approach shot uh, in singles and the guy's way back there, why do I have to split step just before he hits it if he's way, way back there? Why can't I keep moving in because I'm going right. to have time once I see, and the, and the closer I get, the, the better that I take away his right. angles. So I might split step after he makes contact. Right. On the other hand, the closer I am to him, I have to split step earlier. So right. to me, I don't think there's a definitive rule of thumb of when you split step. I think it's more based on how far away is the ball from you when that when you right. or when 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 your opponent makes contact, how far away or how close? Right, right. I, I would agree with that. It's, it's situational. It's also how much pain have you inflicted or not? Do you need to do you need to feel like you need to hedge your bet? So you might pull up a little earlier um, because you, you feel like you're in trouble. And if I go if I if I charge the bull in the china shop, I know this guy's got a beautiful two handed backhand. He can control it, and I know he's probably just going to flip it over my head. So. So yeah, it's definitely situational. I want to mention this too while we're talking about this is that is that what we're talking about here too is movement from the baseline to the net. When do you do the split step? We're not talking about the split when you're rallying from the baseline because that absolutely happens, you know, at point of contact or, or just you know just before point of contact. Your weight is coming down on the balls of your feet when you're in baseline rallies because you don't know. You got to go left or right, forward, wherever. But what we're talking about here is you you have you you can take some liberties with when that split step happens when you're moving into the net. I know for a fact, you know that as a serve California raised hardcore serve and volleyer, um, I would get I would get you know past that service line sometimes because I could see the guy kind of chunked it. I'm moving in. I'm going to take that extra two steps to get a quick split step in and then break right and come in and close the ball off at the net and we're done. Well, I think the other thing, too, is, is there are variations of how deep you have to go into your split step 
depending right. on what's happening over there. I mean, sometimes you can almost sort of just float through it where as you land, you can. I, I, so I, I just I just don't think that, that there's a hard and fast rule on right. on when and how deep you go. I think I think the I think the most important thing is you understand well, what's what's the reason that we do it. Um, yeah, I think here's the other, here's the other thing too is is that I know for sure that um, when I come down out of the split as my as I'm starting to load the weight onto my feet that I'm I'm reading the ball already. Contact is there. I'm reading the ball. I can see that it's going to be. I got to move to my left. So I'm I'm already loading my right foot with the weight and, and unweighting the left, even though it hasn't been this you know perfect right, right. you know you know both together. Right. It's I see what's happening, so I'm already even before you know the full weight distribution is there, already cheating that side, and that's just a natural athletic move. And you can see this too when you watch the pros do it too. I just saw some video I think like a month ago on this actually, which is kind of curious, but um, it definitely showed. Um, well, let me let me let me tell you a situation, uh, a split step situation I had last week in the doubles here, where um, I was serving the ad court and my opponent kept knocking his return down low, and for the first couple times I would actually come in and play a volley, but I was right. down low. I was you know right around the service line. So I would split based on the timing over there, and it was such that I got to this low volley before it bounced, but now all of a sudden I got a net looming in front of me, and I got his partner just kind of salivating because, you know, <laughs> I'm right there in front of him. So I just said, look, until he shows me a different return, I'm going to split really early, really early, let his ball bounce up. And a couple of times it bounced up enough for now I'm salivating and going right at the, at the returner's partner. Right. Right. Other times <clears throat> right. where it wasn't perfect. Well, then I could at least just slide it back deep, but now I wasn't having a volley up and I was, you know, right. up. so I think depending on the situation, you could, you could be splitting early in that situation. I would serve, I would just, I would come into a, I wouldn't even a split. I would just slow down. I just wasn't really hustling to come in. Right. I would just slow right, down right. and I wouldn't even need a split step. Right. Wouldn't even need it. I mean, the guy's carving it over there. All right, I'm slowing down. I, uh, so what? Right. So, I mean, maybe if I looked at the video of me doing it, maybe, maybe there was a little bit of some kind of a neutral <laughs> thing. I think, I think, I think, you know, so, you know, it's, you know, you and I have, you know, and, and as well as, you know, so many, you know, uh, players out there that have, you know, either if not junior college and, um, you know, just years and years and years of playing this game. And so we do things, you know, naturally without even thinking about it. I don't think it's possible for me to actually be in a rally from the baseline without actually checking after, you know, every time I hit a ball, I recover and I do it. I think if you tried to stop me from doing it, my, my head would explode because it was like, Oh, you know, what are you doing? Right. I, I you know, I, but I don't even, I don't feel it anymore. I'm not it's, I'm so unaware of it because I'm focused on that, but it's this, that trained, the, the trained habit of doing that, you know? So, well, I um, think, you know, the, the other thing too is sometimes, I, you know, as you were talking about that, I was, I, I thought of another situation sometimes where, uh, we're, we're in a baseline rally and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, is you put up a really short ball and the guy comes in. Well, sometimes what I'll do is I'll go into a really early split and make a move right. to either try to visually distract the guy or make him <clears throat> think I'm going one way or the other and then come back. And so I think if we split step every time at just a certain moment, it's... It's, it's not real. I mean, it's just, it's, right. it's just, you, I don't know how else to articulate it, but, but there are times when you split step super early, you make a move, it looks like you're doing this and maybe that, that sort of, uh, changes the it, shot choice, whatever. Right. And I, I'd say this though too, you know, cause obviously we've both, we've both taught a lot of people, you know, how to serve and volley split and all that. And, uh, you know, and initially, um, you have to choreograph it. You know, you got to choreograph it because you, there's a rhythm to it and there's a, there's a feel to it and hit the serve, you know, hit the serve first, come in, couple steps, check, come in, hit the volley to understand, 
understand the pattern of it and again the rhythm to it and then once you establish that you know we're not saying that you don't practice it once you establish that rhythm and you understand yourself athletically then you start to, you can start to take some liberties with it under the right uh, you know variables then, then you're then you're using that skill um, at the appropriate moment to get the most effect out of the volley, the most effect out of closing in and closing the gap on the ball, uh, the most effect. And you know what? I'm going to pull up early on this instead of trying to, instead of playing in the dirt, I'm going to pull up early like you just suggested and be able to hit a full blown backhand or forehand. Hey, look, if right? I'm playing, if, if I, if I'm playing serve and volley and for whatever reason, the guy's taking all of his returns and knocking them down at my feet and I'm coming, I've got tough right? first volleys. I'm not going to try to serve harder which means now he gets the ball earlier right i'm not going to try right. to do that nor am i going to try to hit it hard and then really get in and just go come on i hear this all the time oh man one more step one more step well one more step means that you're really not getting one more step you're really reaching too far in front for that volley you're right. off balance so right. for me it's one less step it's going to be i'm going to split early because look i mean the first volley is simply an approach volley Right. So right. even if you have the perfect split step timing, you play the perfect approach volley, you're not hitting a dinger off it. You're still just going to the next core position. Well, what does it matter if I do that or if I split really early because the guy's been knocking it down on my feet? Let his ball sit up and then I play a little right. approach. I end up in the same spot as right. I did if I played a volley. So right. I would rather play the shot that is the easiest one for me to play causes the less friction in terms right. of me having to dig and get down low and oh gee I didn't do my my lunge training last two weeks so you know um, <laughs> well anyway. well again that, that 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 circles back to it's another subject but still it's all part of this is you know your ability to execute the the highest quality you can in your first two shots the return to serve and making your first ball, hitting your serve in your first volley or pulling up a little early and, and hitting a slice or something on your first shot after the serve. You know, the higher quality you can hit, the better off you are. So we can't get stubborn and think that, oh, I'm serving and volleying. I, I got to dig out the first volley and get in there and, uh, you, you know, somehow hit the ESPN highlight reel volley every time because that's just not sustainable. Um, so you got to find a solution there to hit the two highest quality shots you can in a row. Bingo. Bingo. Right there. We're not charging people enough for this, by the way. No, I don't think so. You just gave them the whole, you just gave them the whole world of tennis right there. <sighs> God dang it. You know, I, all right. All right. Well, listen, uh, you know, if, if, if you need to get in the free coaching call with this, um, I think I'll take this one because all right. Because we saw what you did in the beginning. It, yeah, it, I, I, I butchered it, okay? So <laughs> I admit it freely. <laughs> go away. You know what? Go ahead and try it again. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so if you'd like to get on a free coaching call with us, yeah. um, goldballhunting.com, gold you'll click on the calendar link, and you'll cherry pick a time that is good for you. And, uh, <laughs> and then one of us, Brent or Jeff, myself, will call you, and we'll spend – 10 minutes or so on the phone with you when you bring that one item that you need to clear up. One, one, thing, one, one clarification. One, one thing, you know, that is just, uh, you know, the stick in your spokes and you can't figure out and you like to do it. So that's how you get on that call. And okay. but, it's but, free. But I, I want to correct you on one thing there. That was really uh, good, Jeff. Really good. Really good. I think a little more practice would be good. But there's one thing. Not one of us will call you for the coaching call. We'll both call you. It'll be a three-way call. Yes. call. It'll be private. Be yes. totally private. And uh, of course, now you may decide you may not want me on the call. The way I'm just jabbering here, right? So. <laughs> could be just an entertainment call too. Could, could be. Yeah. Maybe we change it from I mean, from coaching call to entertainment call. Uh, guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. We better stop this before. Uh, That's people, right. People start I'm just, I'm unsubscribing. Just, I'm just here for Plucky comic relief. Okay. That's it. That's my role. <laughs> plucky, plucky, good. Well, I, 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 I hesitate to say the microphone is yours again, but I, this is your thing. Oh, let's do it. What the heck? Yeah. Micah, share us. 
please subscribe and let us know what you think down below. Guys, get out there today. Get out there today. Help someone else have a spectacular day. We'll try and do this again tomorrow, Jeff. Can't wait.